If you think gardening in the desert is impossible, think again. When I first started gardening here in Arizona 16 years ago, I had no idea what I was doing or what to expect. I didn't know how different the seasons and climate was from other parts of the country. And in this video, I'm gonna share everything that I've learned so that you can hit the ground running and have more success than I did. Of course, we know gardening in the desert has challenges, intense heat, low rainfall, and tricky soil. When you're in the midst of it, it can feel overwhelming. But gardening here also has some advantages. There's abundant sunshine and we can garden year round and harvest something every day from the garden. When you're gardening in the desert, timing is everything. We have short seasons and you need to understand each one to grow successfully. If you plant something at the wrong time, it doesn't matter how good your soil is, how perfect your watering is, if it's too hot, it's not gonna grow. On the flip side, when you plant the crops at the correct time, even things that you didn't think would grow here, they're going to grow and grow well. Let's start with spring. Spring comes fast. It's right after our last frost, which is generally around Valentine's Day or the middle of February. And it's a race to get those warm season crops in the ground so they can produce before that heat comes in the summer. We never know exactly when spring will start. Are we gonna have some late frosts? And we don't know how long it will last. Is April going to get hot or is it gonna get hot in May or June? But we plant in hopes that we can get those warm season crops to produce and have wonderful harvests before the heat sets in. The trick with this is if you're too early, warm season crops are going to freeze. Tomatoes don't like cold temperatures. So some years I've planted my tomatoes three different times in hopes of getting those early tomatoes in the ground, but then it freezes, so I'm planting again. But we really do want to get things in the ground as quickly as we can so those roots can get established and we can get a quick crop before it gets too hot for those crops. So that means when everyone else is thinking about Christmas shopping, we're thinking about starting seeds indoors for our February crops. It's a little bit different from other areas, but if you're too late, you're going to miss this spring window for warm season crops. So that means in January, when it's still a little bit cold, you're thinking about bed preparation, what you're going to plant, and making sure you have everything in place so when that spring comes, you're ready to go. Summer seems like the longest season and it brings with it extreme heat. The beginning of summer, however, is when we get those harvests from those warm season crops. June is often one of the best months for harvest here in the low desert. It can be tricky because as those warm crops are finishing up, if you want to be successful gardening over the summer, you also have to begin getting hot season crops established so their roots can grow deep and they can tolerate those hot, high temperatures. The extreme heat of the summer is too much for most crops. A lot of vegetables that people think as summer vegetables, warm season crops like tomatoes and peppers and all those things, it's too hot for them in the middle of our summer. When we talk about heat tolerant crops, we're talking about the real summer champions that can handle the heat. It's important to get those planted early in the season so their roots can be established. And then that's when the essentials like good soil, good watering practices, mulch, adding shade, all of those things become essential when you're gardening during the summer in extreme heat. Just because you can garden during the summer doesn't mean you have to, but it's essential to keep that soil alive during those hot summer months. The worst thing you can do is leave your beds empty and turn off the water. For a more hands-off approach during the summer, I recommend a thick layer of mulch and planting an easy cover crop like sweet potatoes or black-eyed peas that can grow over the soil and cool it. You won't need to water as much as if you're growing a lot of crops, but you'll need to water enough to keep that soil alive. That's gonna set you up for more success at the end of the season. Instead of coming back to beds that are dead with dry soil, your soil will be full of life and you may even have a cover crop that you can add to your soil that will give it more organic matter. During the summer, there's a slight shift in our weather. 
we get a monsoon season. Whether or not we get rain, the weather changes just a little bit and the humidity levels increase. It really is our second spring. We get a second chance at all of those warm season crops and I feel like I'm the most successful during this season because there isn't that threat of all of that heat coming and wiping out all of your hard work. Whether or not we get lots of rain, monsoons do bring extra humidity. We feel it when we go outside and we get sticky and we don't like it. The plants, they love it. You'll see a change in your plants during monsoon season. They don't look quite as stressed. Yes, it's hot, but there's a little bit of moisture in the air and they seem to get a second life. And a lot of those plants that have gone dormant over the summer when it's extreme heat begin to put on new growth. That's when you'll see things like your peppers start growing again. And then you'll know that we are ready and heading into that warmer season of fall that is a prime growing season for so many crops. But the seasons are short and this one isn't going to last long. So even as we're having warm season crops grow, we're looking ahead to the next season and getting some of those cool season crops planted. It's hot, but their roots can get established and they will be ready and be able to produce during those fall and winter seasons. Late fall and winter are prime growing seasons. The best time to plant just about anything is October. If you live here, that's everyone's favorite month. We're all a little bit happier because we know that hot summer is behind us. Plants are no different. Almost every plant grows well during October. The days are shorter, but the soil is still warm. It's important to get all of those cool season crops that we love planted so that they can begin growing before the days get even shorter and it gets too cool for them to grow well. As temperatures cool down, everything is going to grow a little bit slower. The crops that you plant during that time will take longer to get established and longer to produce than those that you planted earlier in the fall. Although it's perfect temperatures during the day, the nights are definitely cooler. You feel it in the morning when you go outside. So the days are shorter and plants growth is going to slow down. December, January, and even into early February can be our coldest months. There are several crops that grow year round here that will need some protection if we freeze. Things like tomatoes and peppers and eggplants, we need to cover those up if we get a freeze. Other crops like broccoli, lettuce, kale, and spinach, that cold doesn't bother them a bit. Keep an eye on those low temperatures. When they get below freezing, that's when you'll know it's time to cover some of those warm season crops that we try and grow year round. That brings us back to the start monitoring those temperatures to see when that last frost event is so that you know you're safe to plant more warm season crops and spring has begun. Once you understand the planting seasons, it's all about choosing the right crops and planting them at the right time. That's why I created specific guides for Arizona. My planting calendars, my guide, and much of the information on my website is geared to planting here in the low desert. It's different. When I first started, I was confused and didn't know where to look to find accurate information. Seed packets have a lot of really good information, but the planting dates do not apply to the low desert. They are more geared to planting zones, which are more general and don't take into account high temperatures and extreme heat that we have here in Arizona. Technically, Phoenix is the same zones as places like Sacramento and San Diego. I don't know about you, but I think we're a little bit different than those areas. These won't help you if you live in Iowa, but if you live in the low desert, they're gonna make gardening so much easier. Choosing heat tolerant crops for the summer months and quick growing cool and warm season crops for the other months will help you be successful. When you have a choice, look for the shortest days to harvest. Remember, our seasons are short, so those crops have to produce in a short amount of time. In the spring, focus on growing crops that love warmth but can't handle the extreme heat. Things like tomatoes, peppers, beans, and cucumbers. They grow best when it gets warm. Once it gets hot, that pollen is no longer viable and they won't produce fruit. We have to get these crops producing before it gets hot. In the summer, the champions are these heat-loving crops. Things like sweet potatoes, okra, 
long beans, melons like cantaloupe. They grow throughout the summer and don't mind the heat. The key to getting harvests from these heat loving vegetables and having them grow successfully is planting early enough in the season and then having all of those other things that we're gonna talk about like soil and watering in place so that the conditions are good for them to grow. As things shift to the monsoon, you can replant those warm season crops, the tomatoes, squash, beans, peppers. A key thing to remember is that because our seasons are short, you need to use transplants for some of those plants. We have to maximize that growing time that we have and plant transplants for some crops, while other crops like squash and beans grow best from seed. That's why learning about each of the crops you're growing is so important. As we transition from September into October, that's when the cool season planting begins. We're planting things like carrots, beets, all the greens, spinach, lettuce, all of the brassicas, broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, all of those delicious crops we love to eat. That's the best time to plant. Remember, when you're planting root crops, they grow best from seed. Don't buy those carrot transplants and think you're a bad gardener when they don't grow grow root crops like carrots, beets, turnips, all from seeds. Those cooler temperatures are also perfect for planting our onions, garlic, and our favorite crop, peas. They love all of that cooler weather. Next up is soil. Soil is tough in the desert. That native soil is perfect for growing native plants. But when you're trying to grow vegetables that have to come to harvest in such a short time, you have to give them the ideal growing conditions. Desert soils are typically very low in organic matter, very alkaline and have clay, or in my case, they're full of rocks. I had to use a pickaxe to plant everything I needed to plant in my yard. So what do we do? If you want to grow in the ground, check your soil. If there's good soil there, make it better by adding compost and worm castings and amending that soil. There are definitely advantages to growing in the ground. It retains more moisture, it doesn't dry out as quickly, and those nutrients are only going to get better over time. It does take a long time to get that established, but don't be afraid of growing in the ground. Our desert soils have lots of good minerals that are good for growing. We just need to help it out by adding organic matter. If you want to get started quicker, you can use raised beds. You can fill those beds up with good soil right away and get gardening. That same soil will also improve over time as you continue to add compost and organic matter. Aim to have at least 12 to 18 inches of good quality soil. Gardening and raised beds allows you to fill it up with good soil right away and get started gardening. Whether you're gardening in the ground or in raised beds, focus on your soil. Your garden will only be as good as your soil. Watering, this is the hardest one to get right. Most problems in the garden can be traced back to incorrect watering. Either you're watering too much or not enough. Here in the desert, water is a precious resource. The best strategy for watering is deep, infrequent watering. When you water deeper, less often, that encourages your plant's roots to grow deep. That helps them in times of drought and extreme heat. The soil is cooler and has more moisture if their roots are deeper. Shallow frequent watering tells those roots they don't have to go very far. They're gonna stay right on the soil's surface where it's hotter and drier and your plants will struggle. Using drip irrigation gets the water right where it's needed at the plant's roots. Spraying water in the air means that lots of water is lost to evaporation. Use drip irrigation and timers to help you water efficiently. Once we've got that water where it needs to be, adding a thick layer of mulch is going to help keep that moisture in the soil and regulate the soil temperature. The other issue with watering is salt can build up in your soil. And if you water to the same depth all of the time, that salt will build up at the plant's roots. A couple times a year, run your watering system twice as long to help flush those salts out of the soil. Gardening in the desert is all about creating microclimates. Think of that poor tree in the parking lot surrounded by asphalt and cement. It doesn't have a chance. It's going to struggle because it's so hot. 
When you're gardening, look at the entire space that you're gardening in. Think about ways that you can reduce the temperature of where you're growing. Adding trees and shrubs around the area, not too close to your beds so that those roots will go in your beds, but adding those things around your yard will help bring temperatures down and create microclimates of cooler temperatures in your garden. This is especially important on the western side of your house. That western exposure is what gets that intense late afternoon summer sunlight. Think about ways to block some of that sunlight before it reaches your garden. Shade cloth is another way to bring the temperature down in your garden. It can cool the area by about 10 degrees. Use 50% and put it up when temperatures are above 90 degrees, but take it back down once those temperatures go down. Plants like the sunlight, they just don't need too much of it. Here in the desert, if you live in the city, nights are not cooling down as much. That's the heat island effect. All of that asphalt and concrete and block walls are holding onto the heat and then releasing it during the night. And so we're not getting those cooler temperatures that we used to get at night. Do what you can to reduce that in your own yard. Create a microclimate by using wood chips and mulch and ground covers and shrubs instead of hardscape when possible. Desert gardening brings its own set of pest challenges. Here are a few ways to manage them naturally. Think about everything that's happening in your yard. If you're spraying for bugs, not only are those same chemicals near the food that you're growing for your family, but they're also killing the beneficial insects that can help you out. Instead, take a wider approach to pest control. Not every bug is bad. In fact, most are beneficial or neutral. Think about ways that you can encourage and invite beneficial insects and pollinators into your yard. That starts with what you plant. Look at your entire yard and think about adding native flowering plants that will attract a lot of native insects and wildlife to your yard. It's a different kind of microclimate that you're creating near your garden. When you're planting in your garden, aim to add herbs and flowers along with those vegetables that we love. Not only will it add beauty to your yard, but all those different types of flowers will attract different kinds of insects. And that is who will help you with the heavy lifting of pest control in your yard. If you feel the need to use pest control, use organic methods, but even then be very thoughtful about what you're spraying and using in your yard and use it with a light hand and only as needed. If critters are an issue, sometimes you have to get creative. Oftentimes physical barriers are the only thing that will keep them out. Use other physical barriers like netting and row covers to keep out other unwanted pests. Throughout the year, there's going to be cycles of different insects in your yard, different pests like different times of year. As you garden, you'll begin to recognize those cycles and see them for what they are. What we think of as bad bugs are actually the food for the beneficial insects. And you'll see that cycle play out in your garden. Bad bugs will arrive and if you wait and don't do anything, then the beneficial insects will come. If things get really bad, pull out those plants rather than treating. Be mindful of spraying anything in your yard. Over time, you will develop an ecosystem in your yard with compounding benefits. The plants will benefit the insects and the insects will benefit the plants and gardening will get easier the more you do it and follow those principles. Not only will your gardening environment get better, but you will get better as a gardener. Gardening in the desert is tough. Expect that plants will die, crops will fail, and that you are going to learn more from those failures than you might from the successes. Take that experience from each season and build on it. Luckily, seasons are short and we're moving on to the next crop and you can learn from that crop. When you're just getting started, start small. Start with what gets you excited. Choose one vegetable, one herb, and one flower. Learn all you can with the experience of growing that crop and then add more. Expect and don't be afraid to make mistakes. That is how we grow as a gardener. Along with those failures, you're going to have successes and there's nothing better than the feeling of eating produce that you've grown and feeding that to your family. It's so good. 
Now you know exactly what has been used and not used on that produce. It is very possible to harvest something every day of the year here in the low desert. Our challenges are different, but learn from other gardeners. Join gardening groups, go to gardening classes. I teach them frequently throughout the valley. You can learn from the class, but more important, you're going to be around other gardeners who love what you do. Build a community, swap seeds, swap stories, swap failure stories. We can learn from one another and commiserate with the high degree of difficulty that we're facing growing in the desert. If you have other ideas of things that have helped you, please leave them in the comments. I would love to hear them so we can all learn from one another as we learn to grow food in a hot desert climate. Just talk. So know that those warm... Go away. I'm just gonna go. Yeah. We're the same as Sacramento. San Diego, are we the same? No. <laughs> I should have just ended. <laughs>